blepharitis posterior. Description. There are 30 to 35 meibomian glands opening on to both the upper and the lower, uh, the lower eyelid margins, posterior to the lash line. This glands runs for up to a centimeter through the tarsal plate. Lipid produced by the glands mixes with the aqueous tears to help stabilize the tear film. As such, dysfunction of the secretion of lipids from these glands can lead to local inflammation and dry eye symptoms. Blockage of the glands can lead to sterile, which is chalazion, or infected cysts, internal hodiolum. Symptoms As with anterior blepharitis, there is frequently a disparity between the degree of signs and symptoms. Symptoms result from disruptions to normal ocular surface functions and reduction in tear stability as reflected in a decrease in the tear breakup time. Typical symptoms include burning, grittiness, a foreign body sensation, and mild photophobia, as well as crusting and redness of the lid margins. Symptoms typically fluctuate and are usually fairly symmetric. There may be exacerbations during winter, especially in cold climates. As with most forms of dry eye, symptoms are often made worse in drying environments such as with air travel and air conditioned offices. Signs The key signs in posterior plepharitis is an abnormal abnormality of the meibomian gland secretions. In the meibomian sabora, excess secretions manifest as oil globules capping the meibomian gland orifice and form an oily or foaming tear film. In meibomitis, there is inflammation or obstruction of the gland. This may manifest as little postures at the orifice. Expression of the contents of the glands demonstrates may be blocked. Those that do express, release, yellowy, viscous, even toothpaste-like secretion. The lid margin is thickened and inflamed with vascular dilation and telegyptasia. If chronic, the posterior margin is frequently scalloped, secondary to scarring. Eversion of the lids may demonstrate small meibomian cysts. There is typically a cause of superficial punctate keratopathy involving the inferior third of the cornea and inferior interprobrebral conjunctiva. Pediatric blepharitis. Special mention is note making of pediatric blepharitis because of its ability to cause a significant reduction in vision. This is a relatively uncommon condition, usually affecting young boys and girls between 4 and 12 years of age. It is frequently bilateral. Signs include meibomian gland plugging with or without associated lip inflammation, inferior superficial punctate keratopathy, and frequently inferior corneal neovascularization. The visual acuity may be decreased and there may be a history of recurrent chalazium or hodiola. Management Advice The chronic recurrent nature of the disease should be explained to the patient. Lid hygiene Although less central to disease control than with anterior blepharitis, this is an important component, component of the long-term treatment of posterior blepharitis. Scrubbing of the lashes and lid margin is performed with mild detergent to remove build-up scales and oils. This can be done with either a commercially available product or diluted baby shampoo. Cleaning should be supplemented with warm compress to melt solidified sebum and expression of meibomian gland secretion. Lid hygiene antiseptic foam solutions 
are also available and used regularly, usually several times a week, can significantly reduce the bacteria load. Therapeutic Topical mild corticosteroid Fluoromethylone and broad spectrum antibody chloramphenicol can be used initially QID for one to two weeks to reduce inflammation and bacterial load. Tear supplements instability of the tear film due to chronic inflammation and dysfunction of the lipid component of tears lead to many of the symptoms seen in this condition. This can be improved with the sparing use of tear supplements. A topical lyso liposomal tear stabilizing agent, for example tears again, may be of particular benefits in the presence of lipid layer abnormality with an abnormal short tear bud.